So the whole formal original cobalt is a balanced test and it's poorly named. I will so it's cool to have cobalt, so you know, but concussion <laughs> balance test, it actually should have been something just a balance test, a really <laughs> and I say that because it has static and active vestibular stimulation. So if you're familiar with the CAT SIM, it's standing eye. So there are um, there are four conditions done on a firm surface. In our case, we used um, a force plate, and the same conditions done on a cushion over that force plate. And it's sensitive enough to pick up sway even through the cushion. And so eyes, eyes open on the firm surface, you've got all three systems, close your eyes. Oh wait, that's conditions one and two of the catsup, right? Mm -hmm. The third condition is closing, is a head shake eyes closed test. And um, anybody in vestibular physical therapy for any length of time it might be familiar with the head shake eyes closed SOT on the CDP. So essentially the person's eyes are closed and the pace of the metronome. So they're having to do this and it is set at a range and a pace that we know is at least 85 degrees per second. So we know we're stimulating the inner ear. And so depriving the brain of vision forces the sensory weighting towards the inner ear. So that's eyes closed head shaking. The fourth condition is what is unique to cobalt and incredibly clever if you ask me, but um, Shelly came, so they did um, visual motion sensitivity. We call it VO, initially it started out as VOR cancellation, which really doesn't entirely describe the function. But if I extend my thumbs, and if I look at my thumbs, I'm creating a relative moving visual field. So the task neurologically is VOR cancellation, but the function is visual motion sensitivity set at a much slower pace than the eyes closed head shaking. And I've never sat down and asked how Shelly came up with 40 beats per minute, but that's what she did. <laughs> Yeah. And feet together. So then, so what makes it unique again is, is that we are looking at when we have our force plate, we were looking at postural sway. So how much sway? So we took visual motion sensitivity from a balance perspective, not just symptoms. Symptoms are important, but with all the love in my heart, athletes lie. Nobody <laughs> <laughs> It's just because, and it's completely understandable because they want to play their sport. Who wants to sit on the side? Nobody. So yeah, I'm fine. Anyway, so um, that's what, that's how those came through. And when you get into on the foam, um, that's where it really distinguished amongst athletes. Eyes closed, head turning on the, uh, the eyes closed, head shake on the cushion. That person is now really their most reliable cues and their brain is really getting having to deal with inner ear cues. And the faster mm -hmm. we move, the more our brain should rely on that. And you can see how easily that will convert to a sport related activity that is speed dependent. And then the visual, and then the visual motion sensitivity on the foam, again, um, any athlete in motion tracking an object to make a plan to act upon that, that is their sport, right? And that is visual motion sensitivity that that condition so it's the we tried to take the neurology into it around the function 